Good morning, and welcome to Friday Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquardt from Simply Colorful, and I'm your host today. Today's date is August 22nd, 2014, and I cannot believe, as I say every week, I cannot believe it's almost the end of August. So welcome, and as you can see, it's another daytime show. And one more week. Next week we'll be back on at our regularly scheduled time at 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Today's show is all about hexes and making them. And as you can see, I am hoping for a special guest to join us at any time. So again, welcome to Fibercast. This is a show where for 60 minutes we all work together and see how much we can get done. It's not really a training show, but we certainly share with each other via email, chat, etc. So at any time, send me email on my phone at lmarquadant at gmail.com. And now, without further ado, our guest host that you've all been clamoring for is here. <laughs> Well, hello. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi. This is my sister, Karen. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise to you. I think I'm late. <laughs> no, I think I didn't tell you when I was starting. Oh, okay. So well, here I am. Oh, that's wonderful. Here's your box of hexes. I was just looking for it. Look at that. Thank Isn't you. Isn't that great? You're welcome. So what I have just said to folks is we're doing this early because it's vacation time. I was just about to say that I haven't, I don't think I've showered in a week. <laughs> I'm in full vacation mode. We've had such a good time. We have so much to tell you about. My sister, on the other hand, has been out working and she'll have things to tell you about. She's just come back from a special judging at the fair. So I'm dying to hear how that went. It was good. Good. Mm -hmm. I'll good. tell you more about it if you want, but, I, but it was great. I do. What do you say we get started sewing our hexes? Okay. Then, then we'll hear more. Okay. That sounds good. good. So since we came down earlier this week, my sis, I had never done a hexi. And this is what I have done so far. Pretty proud of that. It looks pretty good. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. You've got them so crisp. Well, and I haven't ironed them. I've just finger pressed. Right. I think part of it is the batik it makes it nice and crisp, plus your, okay. your superb needle craft. Well... <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's interesting because you're right. That was a batik, and this one was the shirt sleeve. Right. And that is so much harder to you said maneuver. It's just slippery and yeah, yeah doesn't yep. kind of crease and hold itself. No, very flimsy. But that is the most awesome shirt. Isn't I'm it? glad you're using it. Good. 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 What have you done so far? So I have this. Oh, I love those colors. And this is left over from that Merry Mayhem mystery that was red, white, and blue. So it's what was on the table. Um, I had some Christmas ones I was doing and I already did a project with that and so I was bored with that. So. Okay. Do you think... So I don't have a project planned. Do you have a project planned? I don't have a project planned. <laughs> With my dear Jane, which I have a couple of blocks that I can do if I don't want to do this, I'm not sure I'm ready to commit to like a full quilt. Right. Oh, yeah. With hexes? A full quilt with hexes? No. Not, not for not you. Not for me. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if... I can see how you catch the bug. It's really portable. Oh, yeah. That you can put in this little tiny box from the dollar store, you can put... I have my little paper pieces that I use as the base, um, some pre-cut pieces of fabric, some needles and some thread and scissors. And so you can just, it's all self-contained, so no wonder people love it. Sure. Taking it to a sporting event or on an airplane or in the car or whatever. I think so, I might set myself up with one of those because I've got a big box. And so what if it takes me five years? Maybe I'll just keep chipping away. That may be what people do. They work on it and okay. work on it and work on it. They also have, you can print out, you can just go on one of the graph paper um, websites and print, if you just Google print graph paper, you can choose the size and shape of grids you 
you want on your graph paper and you can choose hexagonal. So then you print out a sheet of paper that is just the white hexagonals all together in a mosaic and then use colored pencils or markers or whatever to draw your design. Oh, very to use fun. Use a map, which is really cool. Well, I think I mentioned this to you earlier today. I found a site uh, with La Passion hexes. Oh, with the tiny ones. Tiny. I think some of them are only, I don't think they're quarter inch ones. I think they're half inch hexes. And I wonder if I could pull it up here. But they have the most interesting mosaic tile. Yeah. And they're all using that same um, same design. Yeah. That's it's neat. It is really neat. And I can see having fun with that. Um, Maybe you would break it down into units, like you do your flowers or your star points. Uh, there's probably, probably once you get into it, there's more than just the flower. Yes, okay. Okay, I think. But you said something about a um, pin cushion. Making a pin cushion. I did, you know, I saw on TV, not TV, I saw online someone who had made a pin cushion out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes. That's it. Okay. And I guess what I was thinking is I wanted to try and do that. If we could. Oh, and you're almost there. So do you need something? Not at all. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're on your way to a pin cushion. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> and I might undo a couple of these. Well, hang on. How many do I have? So I have one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Oh, I meant to have a prototype done, but it's been such a busy week. So much good stuff going on. I know. Where do we begin? Well, the big news is that it is time for the agricultural fair where we are which has I think it's the 160th agricultural fair here and it's just the the neatest small ag fair we have um, fruits and vegetables and needle craft and handicraft and all that displayed and then there's livestock Cows, pigs. There's a pig, there's a sow with piglets, <laughs> three week old piglets. They're so cute. Oh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Have you seen them? No. Seen them yet? Um, this morning, when we drove onto the fairgrounds, just you could see at the end of the barn uh, some sheep. There was a pen of sheep. There were maybe five or six of them, and they were, you know, they're all cleaned up, tidy, and neat for the fair. And they were all just kind of looking at us all pointing the same direction as if, you know, did you bring my food? Oh, that's <laughs> you know? cute. Because the fairgrounds was, nobody was around yet. We got there early. That's right. What were you doing there this morning? This morning, with my mom and her sister and cousin, we were judging some special awards. Um, awards that are given, the judging's already happened on all the displays inside, you know, first, second, third prizes by uh, experts in their field. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there are a handful, maybe about 20 special awards now, given in memory of local people who had a particular, like one is the Mildred Spalding Award for um, excellence in canning and preserving. One to an adult and one to a junior. They get a a big fancy ribbon and they get a little written card that says what it's for and I think it's like ten or fifteen dollars which, you know, which is big when you consider like a blue ribbon is like you know four bucks or whatever right but, um, so but it's more about that coming in the hall and seeing that rosette that really cool ribbon it's really neat so that's fun so um, some people give their own awards um, come in and judge like the the moistest brownie. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them, uh, we, the fair gives, and they have asked my mom and my aunts to do that 
judging because they've been involved in the fair since they were pr for probably close to 70 years. So, um, in fact, I heard, I don't know who I heard it from, and I don't even know if it's true, but I heard that mom's grandmother started up the fair after the Second World War, or restarted it? Restarted the fair. I'd have to check my, my real history. You know, sure. There's, there's history in my mind, and then there's history, family history, and then there's real history. <laughs> right, and there's always made up history in this mind. Yep, yeah, me too. But I think the way the story goes was the fair, which had, was um, an old-fashioned agricultural fair with livestock and such, and things like tug-of-war. Um, I remember Uncle Willis, who was born in the year 1900, mm -hmm. talking about uh, they had contests of strength feats of strength. Really? They did, yeah. Oh, and he was a, a, a big man, he wasn't was a, he? He was a big a strong, of a man. yep. Um, anyway, it had taken a break like many things did in, in the U.S. around the time of the war. Okay. And then when the war was over, um, they got it going again. Oh, isn't that fun? So, of course, it's grown a lot since then. <laughs> But it's still a tiny little wonderful fair. And of course, outside there's uh, carnival rides and games and booths and fried food and horse oh. pole later today. Oh. And just so that's, that's the history of why you and mom and her cousins, her sister and cousins, right, are asked to go in there after all the other judging is done. Talk about a fun little gig. And you get to go in and give special awards. Yeah, some of them. That is so fun. Now, I was sleeping when you left this morning. I well, we left at <laughs> seven in the morning. <laughs> Vacation. Right. Vacation. Right. And I have to tell you, I slept really well because of all we did yesterday. Well, that's good. What did we do yesterday? <laughs> do tell. It's a whirlwind. We let's see. Yesterday was. Thursday? Oh, man. Yesterday we went swimming at the cut in the ocean between that and a pond. It's a freshwater pond and they need to add some salt water to it periodically, make it brackish. That's our special word of the day today, brackish. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, the, oh, that blew up the phones. <laughs> Kelsey. Kelsey said she just noticed Fibercast is live and she's watching it. Isn't that good? Because usually we don't catch you at night because you're busy with your family. You get a gold star for paying attention and being here. You do. It may be just the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kelsey. Kelsey, do you know who Kelsey is? I think so. Oh, you have something in common with Kelsey. Oh. She met her husband at Cornell. Oh, really? So, Kelsey, this is my sister who met her husband at Cornell mm -hmm. and got married at the Sage Chapel. Yeah. Kelsey is the long armor. Long armor. Yes. Blueberry. Yes. And I, get, I, need to, I need to be like Bart Simpson and write this on the wall until I learn it. Blueberry Lane Studios is my guess right now. <laughs> Hi, Kelsey. You do beautiful work. <laughs> she really does. Oh, and she sent a picture of what she's working on. She just noticed that Fibercast is on. I'm working on Justin's college quilt today, one week until drop-off. Wow. Justin is a very good student. He's studying chemistry. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't that neat? Yeah. One oh. week till he goes to school. And I'm going to get it wrong. It's either Northeastern or BU. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. That's not really... There we go. The light's playing. The light tricks. is playing tricks. As you can see, we're outside. I have heard, for those of you watching, Kelsey, <laughs> 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 um, that the picture has been better since we've been streaming live from YouTube. So that's great. Please let me know. 
let us know. Either way, if it's not working, if, if it's really hard to find, because to tell you the truth, after Fibercast, I kind of, I don't, I very, very, very rarely go back and watch an episode, I have to tell you. I don't like to watch them. <laughs> you should. They're stunning. <laughs> yes. They are. <laughs> they are. You're very entertaining. <laughs> oh, I love to do them, believe me. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting out this will be the center of my pin cushion, the bottom of my pin cushion. Okay. Okay. And I'm I'm doing the basting. I'm using thread like you showed me. I keep reading about this so line fabric glue that we might want to try where you glue these down, but that's at that a later Sounds date. like cheating. <laughs> okay. Glue. Yeah. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? So then I'm cutting out six of these to go around to make my so my rosette. I find too that I put a pin right in the center before I before I baste it. Okay. I just put a pin in there. And that really helps. It huh? really helps. Because otherwise I'll get around to the last um, when I'm basting, I get around to the last side and I don't have I've I've worked out of the center. I know exactly what you mean. And usually that's the beautiful thing about about it is you can usually make it work. I mean, you'd okay. have to really get way out of whack to... <laughs> Were these cut on the AccuQuilt? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you can make it work. <laughs> Fantastic. Who, who's the guy on Project One Runway Make It Work? Gun? Oh, yeah, Tim Gunn. <laughs> you yeah, could yeah, make yeah. it work. Nice. Yeah, you could make that work. That happened to me. Look at this white one in the center. I didn't right. pin it. You get a different seam allowance, basically. Right. And then it looks messy on the back. On the back. But on the front, it's gorgeous. True. Who's looking on the back? True. Some, well. nit, some nitpicky <laughs> pain. I need little pins still. These pink Here. pins are too... Oh, thank you! Seriously? Yeah. I only brought five with me, though, so don't lose it. <laughs> I won't. I'll give it back. I saw, I saw the cutest little thimble that you hang around your neck, and you make it into a, uh, a pin holder, and so you can just put your five pins there. Really? Yeah. Or your ring. Yeah, you have to be careful. Okay. Or a ring. Yes, yes, yes. So, no, did we tell folks about our AccuQuilt dilemma? No. <sighs> Well-intentioned. I forgot the top piece to put on the AccuQuilt die. You may remember we brought down the big AccuQuilt, which we love, and we brought down our new Hexi die to cut our paper and our, our fabric. But when you lie the die down and you crank it through, you need that top, top plastic that makes Thanks. sense. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, but imagine once we get this going. I could send you I could send you a little bit of fabric for you to cut for me, right? Could I do that? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or you can take the Accu quilt and No. I can send them. No. Absolutely you can. That would be fun. She who has possession of the Accu quilt must must use must the crank. Accu quilt. <laughs> Is it hard to crank? No. No, it's wonderful. I have not experienced any like elbow pain oh, or anything. Oh, good. Good. I'm wearing a big overstuffed t-shirt. So, let's go back to the fair for a second. Yeah. So this fair is 4 days long, right? Mhm. Mm and what and this morning you did the special judging. Mhm. Mm what other things have you worked on for this fair and is it almost over? <laughs> the work? Yes. Um, you mean the, what did we enter in the fair? or? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to know that too and I no. think people would but also like what chores because oh. you and mom all of a sudden you'll disappear and you're up mm. at the fair working which is great mm -hmm. and Tommy and I went up one day but what are the types of things that you guys gotcha. do to volunteer? Well, growing up because uh, family has always been involved, um, on Alice was a fair director, in fact, um, for many years. I we remember. have been involved in many of the processes with bringing in the entries. 
So um, when I was a teenager, I met this really great lady through my Aunt Alice named Jane Newhall, who was the entry clerk. <clears throat> and she taught me everything, not everything, but she taught me enough so that eventually I could take over for her. And for several years as a teenager, I can hardly believe it now, I was the entry clerk for the fair, which meant um, cataloging. People fill out an entry blank of what they're going to enter, cataloging them and filling out a little ta identification tags for everything. Um, writing all the entries into a book so the judges have them for for judging. All manual. Right. Well, then, gosh, it was like 1980, about 80 to 86 or so, and yeah, it was all done by with pen and paper, and it worked just fine. We had fewer entries then. Um, How many entries do you think you have now? Sounds like about 3,000. Wow. So in the scheme of things, if you guys are used to a state fair, um, it's tiny. It's tiny. But uh, the quality, having been to some of the other state fairs around in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts and even uh, Vermont, um, it's more concentrated. And you know, you get to see more, look at things more carefully. OK. Um, anyway. So about 3,000 now. Probably then we were more in the range of 1,500 to 2,000. So oh, okay. it was less entries. But it was a big job for a kid. Totally. And I can remember sitting outside, out front, with you in the hall and that window. Yep. We would have to write tags when people brought their right. entry They'd forms arrive up. in the morning to, to make their entries, and they'd have armloads of flowers and and their sweater that they knitted and everything. And then they'd say, I want to enter these. And we'd have to look up the category, fill out the form, write the tags. Well, we don't do that anymore. Now it's in a computer. People have to still look up their category and write their forms, but they have to send them in a few days ahead of time so that the entry clerk, who isn't me anymore, um, and her staff can get them put in the computer and print out the tags. So now, mom volunteers and takes care of then organizing all the volunteers so that when people come in now with their armloads of things they can find their tags get them attached and get them in the hall for judging um, so we've been doing that okay um, that's, that's so huge. fun because the people that come in you know it's their labor of love and it's a lot of it is kids like kids yeah. drawings and stuff and they are just so excited. So they leave, they leave them and drop them off, say, on Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning. And then you wait all day Thursday for the judging to happen and Wednesday night for the judging to happen. And then you get to go in and find your thing that you entered and see if you got a ribbon. And it's so exciting. I got a ribbon. That's so right. I'm, I got a couple ribbons this year. I generally enter flower arrangements. But this year, for the first time ever, since my sister has me hooked on quilting suddenly. I entered two quilts and I got a ribbon on one and I, I have to say there were tears in my eyes. <laughs> but the cool thing was just seeing it hung up. Isn't that amazing? It's it's the coolest thing. And it was your Simply Colorful quilt, the one that's all the rainbow of the colors. The that you rainbow made. one, yeah. The yep. paper piece and one that you showed us here. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, there's nothing like seeing it hung up. I think, and so now I'm inspired, I think I'm going to enter my Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt in the Bloomsburg Fair. Oh, wonderful! Seriously? Yeah. And then we'll have pictures of a Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt hanging in a fair. I love that it. would be fun? I do love it. Well, your Bonnie Hunter is hanging there. It is. It is. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, you'll have to tell me. Now, that's in October, right? Down near where you are. Uh, late September. Oh, late September. Okay. okay. So, needless to say, so after you, you do all that volunteering, plus people enter things. Yeah. And so yesterday was our Thursday where we waited for the judges to see what had happened at the fair. So mom kept us entertained by taking <laughs> us to the cut. <laughs> she did. Is that what she was doing? I, I didn't so. even notice. I think so. Kind of like Christmas. <laughs> Keep them busy. <laughs> That's funny. And well, we did. We went to the beach. Yeah. Crabbing. We went crabbing. <sighs> what else did we do? 
You worked. You had you worked a few hours oh, yesterday. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. See how quickly you forget. I know. Now I'm totally in vacation mode. Darn work. Ugh. I got called into work Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, right? Not for just for a few hours. And when I said called in, I was dialed in like here. But anyway, enough about us. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you all are doing mm -hmm. and what you're working on. Do you ever enter what you... Oh, whoopsie do. Whoopsie do. That's okay. We can make make it work. You want me to go get that one? No, nope. oh, I can reach it. No, no, no worry. All right. Um, do you enter things in your guild shows or fairs or whatever? Exactly. Do you have pictures of, of things entered? And, and why is it that it looks... They look so different when you... See them out in the world, in the big, in the big world. I'd love to hear that. I get the nicest letters from people. Do you? Mm-hmm. And I, I just wish there was a way to share it with everyone. No. It. Um, but it's all good. Everyone is just living very fun lives. Good. Yes. We are very fortunate. Yep. So tonight, there's the fireworks. That's right. That's right. And we get to use the picnic quilt. That's right. Oh, you guys, that picnic quilt that she was working on with the ants. Remember she was doing the, the uh, free motion quilting? Ants and soda and Dairy Queen ice cream. She put all our names in it. Um, it is the most... It is just <laughs> cool. It, she can do with a sewing machine just like this what I can't even do with a pencil on a piece of paper. <laughs> that, that is very true. That is very true. The, the ants are just so, Aunt, Aunt Alice would say they're cunning. They're uh, so aren't they cunning. So cute. Um, and she, of course, labeled it with including a couple photographs of us having fun on a vacation. Yep. And then she included instructions. She made a, a pouch to keep this quilt Oops, in. Sorry. And instructions. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. It's a shake out, spread right. out. Find a location on a beach or, or grass. Spread out the quilt. Eat, drink, enjoy. And then wash it. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Use it. Use it. It's right. awesome. It's awesome. So we're going to sit on it tonight. Hey. We'll have a picnic probably, won't we? Oh, yeah. See what I'm going to do? So I have just... And you know what? I didn't... You did fine. It looks well. Good. So here's an example. This one I pinned before I basted it. And the back is pretty regular. This one I kind of forgot to pin. So see how by the end, the back... The... Fat, the the piece of paper has actually moved a bit. But now what I'm going to do, and I don't know if you do this, although it's really not the right color thread, but I could use the thread that I basted with to sew together my first two hexes, couldn't I? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I did. I did that, and look at this with the wrong thread. Don't oh, do it. All right. Take time to put the right thread in, because I, right. my first on this dark blue... I happened to be basting with a, a tan thread because I just was using whatever I had. Okay. And the, these little tan stitches, I know you can't see them, but they really show up and it's such a bummer. I had black. Okay. And the black is working just fine. Oh, that is so a bummer. You know what, though? You know how you can fix that. With a Sharpie? Yep. Really? Yep. Huh. People do it all the time. Sure, why not? I'm all for it. I'm not creating heirlooms here. <laughs> um, Famous last word. <laughs> when your great-grandchildren are down at the fair <laughs> and they've repurposed these hexes into a quilt. <laughs> this is my great-great-great-great-great-grandmother and aunt made these. Except for this one seam that came out <laughs> that dissolved because it was coated in... Alright, so... 
Now I need one for the bottom? That's not going to work. Well, it's going to be a very small one. Each of these... Each of these hexes are going to ultimately fold in half like that. Mm -hmm. So you're going to create one more. All right. And it's going to be tricky. I think at some point, after you put one more on right here, yeah. then we're going to have to take out the, the papers yeah. or just be very... We literally have to fold it like that and yeah. sew that up. All right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you not liking it as much? No, I love it. Is it smaller I love than it. you thought? No, it's it's cool. It's just my my geog geography. My geography is really bad. My geometry is even worse. It will work. One, two. Yeah, I guess it would. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right. And you could almost put a um a button through it at the end, and we'll fill it with the, the walnut shells. Again, it'll be tiny. I got this. Okay. And thank goodness you've got this because I think there's no way I'm going to have a whole prototype done. I was making you talk too much. <laughs> no, I love to talk. You think I should use blue or white? Oh, I think it's completely up to you. A whole quilt. A whole quilt of these. I think I could do it. I'm I know you could. I know you could. Like look okay. you don't think you'd get bored though? I well I don't know. What would keep what would be keep you interested about it, you think? I do like the cleanliness of it, which is uh -huh. a weird thing. <laughs> I saw someone call their studio, their sewing studio, their therapy room. So now we're, we're entering into therapy area. <laughs> but I think that there's something very satisfying about making order out of these scraps of fabric. Okay. And that it's so, especially with our AccuQuilt, yeah. they're just going to be so perfectly yeah. precise. Yeah. And I'm not a real, pr as you know, I'm not a real precise sewer. You are, though. Your well, things, your things come out very neat. Thank you. They but, do. Mm, they do. Well, this back thing, like you'd think I could be, I'd be able to get that consistent seams. Anyway, <sighs> so Kelsey's working on Justin's quilt. That's exciting. And you'll be down to two children at home. Do you remember? Now, you're not an empty nester yet, are you? Not yet. One more year. Ooh. One Ooh. more year. Exciting. So your Tommy is a senior. Mm -hmm. <sighs> exciting. I am looking forward to the draft horse pull today. Yes. Do you know what time it starts? I wanted to say 10. No? I, 11 or 1? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I have a tendency to get there during the lunch, during the break. Oh, that's right. You know? There's really no excuse for us to not know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're indoor volunteers. So, I'm sure... Oh! Oh! What? what I there? think I just saw Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Is it working? Oh! <laughs> Hello, Sarah. Hi! <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. Is it working? Oh, my gosh. And while you guys talk, my husband is calling me, probably from the boat. So let me... Oh, that's even more important. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I'm oh, on my goodness. Yes, we can. 
So the interesting right thing now. is that when we talk, we're on the big screen, and when you talk, you're on the big screen. I wonder what the people out Decided in the rest of the world now. are seeing. When That's really neat. Coming? Oh, I don't know. I, I hit a button and something happened. <laughs> Well, you so, might be, I'm not sure, Sarah, but you okay. might be Let broadcasting live to the there. world. Oh, my. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can drop out of this thing because <laughs> it asked me if I wanted to join the Hangout, and I said, sure. And oh, here good. I am. Wow. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're baffled. <laughs> I'm baffled too. So I'm going to try to turn it off and well, turn it back yeah. on. Tell us what you're doing today. Actually, I just got to the studio. Um, I've been running around putting up flyers about the uh, Dragonfly Festival that's happening tomorrow night in Ashland. It's an arts and crafts festival, a uh, nonprofit for Ashland residents. So. I just got to the studio and saw that you were broadcasting early, so I thought I would join the Hangout, and boy, did I ever join. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you for joining, and we'll have to do this for real sometime. Yeah, we'll have to figure out for real sometime. So have a great show. I'll try to log in on YouTube and watch you. Okay, bye. Bye. It'll be interesting to see what what records on that. Yes, it will. We may have just discovered something, you know, with some fine tuning that could be really fun. Totally. Yeah. Oh, I really think that these things develop so quickly, and I think that they, like Google and YouTube and the different places, they put out different versions. We may be beta testing or gamma or whatever further down the road and not even know it. I see. I think they roll things out and pull them back and roll things okay. out. Okay. That makes sense because sometimes I swear there are more buttons on the left hand side <laughs> of what to do. Right. Share this link. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> so Sarah's on. Sarah's on. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Oh, and she's so cool as a cucumber, right? She is cool as a cucumber. Knowing me, I'd be in my pajamas, on my bed or something. Right? <laughs> Let me see. So, do you need to go get your husband from the boat? No. Oh. He is in the Gifford lot. Oh. So he is close, but he doesn't think he's either going to catch the freighter or he's going to catch the noon boat. Okay. So I will pick him up at one. Or. He'll call me when he gets closer. I did tell him that we were doing Fibercast Live. He's so well trained, you know, after what, 39 episodes or yeah. something? He said, Oh, I thought that was at night. <laughs> well, it is. I know. Yes, I know. Is. You're right, honey. You have been listening. All right. Now, what do you think? You think the best strategy is to start, is to go this way? and then bring up the pedals, or do you think I should try to go this way? See, you've done more. I don't know. But it would be going that way is the way. At some point, I'm going to have to do right side to right. Or oh, I'm gonna I have see. To, I'm going to do this. At some point, I could make an inside-out box. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a problem. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Thank you. You've done this more than me, just to see how... It didn't even occur to me that at some point they all get together. I'm fussy cutting this one. Nice. That will keep you entertained. That's true. That will keep you entertained. Because you like to put in, like on your house quilt, you have your interesting things to That's look for. That's true. I did finish several Dear Jane blocks, I think, the day after the last fiber cast. I don't oh, let's see them. Yeah, I don't think I hand? should. I do. And I prepped up two more, but I don't 
did I write on the back? I didn't write what they were. That one's ready to be. Oh, neat. Yeah. Be appliqued. You know, I'm doing all the easy ones. This fall, when I get back in my studio, yeah, there are going to be some some dear Janes with a lot of pieces, some doozies. some doozies. But that's okay. So this one, I finally got the middles in. Everyone out there, you've probably seen these a hundred times. Oh, you guys, the camera doesn't do them justice. The fabric is really pretty, really nice. Thank you. Yeah. This one I haven't squared up, but I finally got that done. Pretty. This one, had I done the points on that one? Good grief. Look at that. They're tiny. <laughs> I did the points on this one. Beautiful. Oh, I did the circles on that one. Nice. So those edges around each of these is not pieced at all. It's just applique on. Did that one. Jason's Jacks. That's really pretty fabric. That's it. Isn't that pretty? Uh -huh. I got that at Sophisticated down our street. The, the old fabric place. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I would like to come out and visit you sometime soon and go to the Amish Country Quilts fabric stores. We can do that. There's <clears throat> actual... Amish country fabric stores down in Lancaster. Okay. And um, then I know of a couple that are, they're actually Mennonite, and they're just fabric stores that are, they're cool. They, they have a large range of, some in Amish country, the quilt shops, you will find quilt fabrics. Okay. And nice ones, just very similar, but a little different culture than a, than a local quilt shop. But some of the Mennonite fabric stores have everything from, you know, lots of fabric for garments because oh. a lot of a lot of women make their own clothing. Okay. So besides quilt fabrics, there's you know like what you would make work pants out of or whatever. So it's neat. It's neat to see. That is. And it's also neat to kind of hang around and see what people's projects. You know, when you go into a I when you go into a quilt shop, we're all touching and thinking quilts. Right. But in the Mennonite shop you'll see people, you know, holding up bolts of fabric against them because they're gonna make a dress. You know? Sure. Different like when was the last time No I haven't made a dress in a long time. It's just a different way of looking at fabric. It's kind of neat. That is. But yeah, we can do that. We can do that. All right. I'll try some of my paper out. That may be a problem. Oh, interesting. It may be, though. Look at how flimsy it gets already. Mm -hmm. All right. So keep the paper in as long as we can. That's what I'm hearing. Uh oh. No, oh, we're okay. Okay. I probably should have read the instructions. There weren't any. <laughs> no. One of those. Yes. Are you watching the time? Well, yes. I think we've got, we started at 10.15. We've got about 14 minutes left. Okay. Doesn't it time fly? It does. Folks don't know, but the dog is right down at our feet because I thought if I left her out around the side, she'd bark. So she's right here. She is so sweet. She's a black lab. And she, like kids, she behaves very well when Lynn's not around. <laughs> But if she has the idea that Lynn is here somewhere, or Bob, or Bob, Bob more so, I have to say. <laughs> given a choice between any of us and Lynn, she'd choose Lynn. But given a choice between Lynn and Bob, I think she'd choose Bob. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> um, 
she just barks. Just little, you know, hey, where are you? Hey. That's Pay all. attention to me. She just, yep. Yeah. We have spoiled her. She's wonderful. She's not spoiled. <laughs> I'm her favorite auntie. <laughs> You're her only auntie. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's not, not true. true. <laughs> Hi, Carol. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. This one really got off kilter. I have to say, like, hexes aren't something that happens fast, at least not when we're speaking, I guess, talking. But those little quarter-inch ones you were talking about, that's... Craziness. Oh, they're stunning when they're all done, but yeah. Can you guys imagine? People do these. This is an inch. They measure them at the edge. It's an inch. Some people do them so it's a quarter of an inch. Oh, so they measure them at the edge. That's, yes. So when you talk about a one inch hexi, that's what you're working on. All right. And I think I'm just going to keep um, basting mine because I don't have any red thread. And it really, to your point earlier, it does make a difference. I pink. What color pink? No, thank no. you. Sorry. Thank you, though. No! I have every other color, blues. And look, I have only done three. No, four so far. I have, been, I have been taking bobbins out of my bobbin box okay. and carrying a bobbin with me for thread with them. Very smart because look at this. They take up less room in your box. They take up less room in my box. And if you have... You know how your sewing machine guy or girl will tell you to use the right bobbin? Yes. Right? You're, if yes. you have bobbins that you got somewhere along the line that don't go to your machines, this is a good way to keep them out. I guess. Yeah. Good idea. If you haven't gotten yourself to just throw them away. I haven't. I haven't. Unfortunately, I still cannot pick out my Bernina bobbins yet. I really? Need, yeah. I think I must have some imitation Bernina bobbins that are very close. Oh. And I just haven't learned how to differentiate. And do you notice that that they the real ones sew better? Not yet. Oh, okay. Well, then it doesn't matter. That's true. Just that when I brought my Bernina in, the technician delivered back two bobbins. I just need to take the time. And he said, these aren't for the Bernina. Ha-ha. <laughs> ha You troglodyte, you. <laughs> All right, so here's my new my new strategy. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to work inside out with the paper in, and then once you take the paper out, it's easy to turn right side out. Oh, beautiful. I think that's how I'm going to go. I like that approach. <laughs> Do you have the walnut shells? I don't here. No, but I mean, you have walnut shells at home? Did you find walnut shells somewhere? No, but Sarah, uh -huh. who was the other presenter on today's Fibercast, yes. <laughs> yes. has a good lead on some, and they're lavender scented. Ooh. Do you use walnut shells in doll making, too? Uh, I, I don't think I have ever. I'm okay. sure you could. She taught our guild how to make another pin cushion type. Okay during last year's um, getaway weekend and she brought bags of walnut shells and I've seen them in quilt stores. Me too. Yeah. I I made that a, a pin cushion thing and I went in search of walnut shells and it said you can get them at the um, pet store. Oh, well yes you right. can if you want a I guess they use them for bedding for snakes and reptiles so if you want a 
50-pound bag of walnut shells. Oh. Or you can buy them in the quilt shop. Of course, they've been broken down smaller, so sure. of course they're quite expensive. I ended up using sawdust because that's what I had. Okay. And? And I should have used the walnut shells because <laughs> the sawdust over a little, just a little bit of time has broken itself down to be very fine and it's working its way out of the fabric. So, okay, good to know. Again, that wasn't a an heirloom, but... Well, no, that's good to know because actually next Valentine's Day for the Guild, uh -huh. I'm supposed to bring a little project. Oh. And even though Sarah did do the pincushion already, I don't know. I was leaning toward another pincushion. Uh -huh. So if I need walnut shells, I'll go to the pet store. Yeah, especially if you're with a guild, you know, that's not yeah, like it's your own us. personal lifetime supply of walnut shells. <laughs> I'd have one of those too, though. <laughs> no, I know. You're doing the math. Let's see. <laughs> Actuarial science comes to quilting. So. <laughs> Oh, I saw a woman post something. She said she had promised her husband she would not buy any more new fabric until the new year. Oops, the new year. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, she doesn't have too long to go. Nope. She can do it. Could you keep yourself busy with the fabric you have? for the rest of your life? Probably. I probably could too. Boring! I know. <laughs> so though I... I go and look in the stash and I've got a particular color in mind or something in mind and I'll say, oh! I don't have any reds. Hardly have any reds. Right. So then I'll go and me too. In search of a red and come home with three. Yep. Or whatever. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, I nope. Is it okay if I post a picture of your award-winning quilt? It's certainly okay, but I think they've already seen it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's certainly okay. If it's all about me, it's anything's fine. So, okay, so remember everyone, we're interested if you have entered in fairs, what you've entered, what you might have won. Let us know that. That would be fun to share. Next week we'll be back home in our home studios. I know Justin will have been dropped off almost to school. Um, Tommy will be back at school. Tommy will be back at school. Yep, Jean's kids will be back. Sarah's boys, maybe both of them will be back. Oh! Totally random, before we conclude, had a question for my sister that I'm going to ask live since Sarah's on the line. Jason, who went to Pennsylvania for welding, if I'm right. So, okay, my back Jason? Up. Yes, you're Jason. Uh -huh. Sarah's son is going to State of Pennsylvania welding school, where he's getting a special college certificate in welding. Cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I wonder which one. She's told me. Penn Tech? That sounds right. Is cool. that where Jason went? No, he went to Triangle Tech, but Penn Tech is Brighton Williamsport. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. So we may hook them up if if her son is is in need of some tips on how to break in the first time. Maybe. Has Jason switched careers? That's fine. We won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to connect you two on that. <laughs> but if if you need any any other tips about Pennsylvania, we're there. 
<laughs> oh. Yep. So I hope everyone continues to enjoy the last few days of summer. We certainly are going to. Absolutely. And we'll post this when it's done. Yeah, it's getting there. I know it is. Thank you. I don't you. want to turn it the other way yet, but it's, it's getting there. So, yeah, that's really not much to look at yet, but just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, soon I'm going to have an inside-out pink cushion. <laughs> oh. I think that's definitely the way to do it. Leave the paper in, do it inside out, and then once you pull the paper out, you'll be able to turn it easily. True. Very good. Well, thank you all. I'm going to do it too. Mm -hmm. We'll post pictures of both of our things. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern.